Do you know, I had no idea there were so many different types. Oh yes, snuff boxes were quite popular in the 18th and 19th centuries. Rarely was a gentleman ever seen without one. Look at this one, are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh yes, very high quality diamonds, I'd say. I can't begin to imagine what they must be worth. Well, let's just say I hope he's well insured. Yes, I agree. I think you could easily pocket the lot of them. In fact, the whole collection could be scooped into a large handbag. <laughs> Where's our host got off to now? <sighs> Strange fellow, isn't he? He actually fell asleep the last time I was here. Well, his manners may be lacking, but I've heard he probably has one of the best chefs in London. I can confirm that, <coughs> Mr. And if I was told to steal anything from Mr. Satana's, it would be the woman in charge of his kitchen. My, whoever said that the quickest way to a man's heart was through his stomach, short of a thing or two. What do you think, Miss Meredith? Oh, I haven't given it much thought. Well then, it's something to keep in mind when the right person comes along. Oh, forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. I had one or two last-minute preparations to attend to. I want everything to be perfect, you see, so that this will be an evening none of you will ever forget. It really is a remarkable collection of snuff boxes, Mrs. Satana. A remarkable collection, yes. A good phrase, Mrs. Armour. Well chosen. This one is most unusual. Uh, that was crafted by Storr and Cooley, the great American silversmith. Yes, I know. How did it come to be in your possession? Oh, I always keep the source of my supply a secret, Mrs. Armour. But I have an idea we both know where that one came from, originally. It's lovely. Lovely. My dear Mrs. Oliver, I'm delighted to see you. The evening would be nothing without you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Santana, but I do agree with you. <laughs> You're in good form, I see. Well, I've just finished a new book, and it is such a relief. Is it about your famous Finnish detective? Sven Hearson, yes. I almost got him killed off this time. Unfortunately, he escaped at the last minute. Well, surely you don't want to kill him off. He's made you famous. Do you know, if he were a real person, I would devise a way of killing him that would confound Scotland Yard and astonish the world. So, you are capable of committing murder, Mrs. Oliver? There isn't a person living who would have committed murder under certain circumstances. Sherry? Please, very try. Oh, thank you. May you never get caught. And may you never be the victim. I'll drink to that. Come along, you must meet the others. Doctor, I'd like to introduce to you a famous celebrity. May I present Mrs. Ariadne Oliver, the famous crime writer. How do you do? Oh, 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 Roberts, David Roberts, it's a great pleasure. Uh, Mrs. Larmer. How do you do? Miss Anne Meredith. I enjoyed body in the study so much. Thank you. And uh, Major Despard, adventurer extraordinaire. An honor. So what are you doing here, <coughs> Mrs. Oliver? Well, I'm drinking a very fine cherry. Oh, forgive me, Doctor. It's only I've just finished a new book, and I'm a little lightheaded. My friends say I'm body at such times, and my family doctors have been threatening to have me certified for years. It must be quite early when you get to that final page. Oh, I always end up a little prayer. But you do like writing, don't you? Oh, I hate it. Then why do you do it? Well, it's better than working for a living. Why is it we always seem to dislike doing what we are good at and would prefer to be doing something completely different? Really? I was under the impression that doctors were quite dedicated to their practice. You're not going to disillusion me, are you? Certainly not. If I told you the truth, it would not be good for business. Well, I can honestly say that I enjoyed every moment of my life. Which, for the most part, is about facing death. I love it. Not knowing what awaits me in the next clearing. The jungle fascinates me. So, Miss Meredith, what do you do for a living? Oh, I don't do anything. Not at the moment. A rich young lady, huh? No. And before you put your next question, I'm not looking for a rich husband either. <coughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to be impertinent, my dear. But 
It's good you're not looking for a husband of any sort. You're far too young. I am going to be very rude and drag Mrs. Oliver away from you. Uh, you'll all have a chance to continue your conversation later, but right now I have something very important to ask her. <laughs> well, well, what? What do you think of my collection? I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Not the snuff boxes, Mrs. Oliver. I was referring to my special collection. <laughs> Somewhere along the way, Mr. St. Taylor, you've taken a sharp left turn while I rushed straight ahead. When I invited you to dinner, I offered to show you my special collection. Did I not? Well then, aren't they magnificent specimens? You see, we have an interest in common, dear lady, crime. But we look at this business from very different ends of the spectrum. For you, a crime is committed, an investigation follows, a clue leads you on, ultimately there is a conviction, therefore the perpetrator of the crime is a failure second rate. And I, I collect only the best. I think you are beginning to understand. So what you're trying to tell me, Mr. St. Hanna, in a most roundabout and devious manner, <laughs> is that the four people over there have all successfully committed a crime? Not a crime. The crime. The ultimate crime. Murder. Oh, come now, Mr. St. Hanna, you're <laughs> joking. They have all committed murder and got away with it. Not a breath of suspicion attaches itself to any one of them. In that case, how did you find out? Because I am a clever man. Cleverer than the police and the so-called experts. Admit it, Mrs. Oliver, I have a very amusing hobby. I'd say no. a very frightening hobby. How so? Hasn't it struck you, Mr. St. Hanna, that murderers have a very nasty habit? Murdering people? Especially those who discover their deep, dark secrets? Tonight, I have nothing to fear. I shall have protection. I'm glad to hear it. Although I like living dangerously, I find it rather stimulating. Hmm. Oh, good. The Superintendent Battle has arrived. The Superintendent Battle? Oh, Scotland Yard? The plot thickens. Superintendent, how good of you to come. I've heard that dinner parties here are irresistible, Mr. Satana. And, if, and I have one great weakness in life, eating and drinking. <coughs> May I introduce Mrs. Ariadne Oliver, the famous crime writer? How do you do? It's a pleasure. Sherry, please. I think I've read all your books, Mrs. Oliver. In fact, I find them most useful. I'm constantly pinching your ideas. Oh, you wouldn't like to return the compliment, would you? Let me have access to your files so I can pinch on a few of your ideas. Sorry, my files are strictly private. Anyway, I was hoping to get away from all of that this evening. Thank you. Mrs. Oliver. Thank you, though. But surely you can't find crime fascinating, Superintendent. Especially unsolved crimes. I don't know anything about those. I only go after the crimes that I can solve. It makes life much simpler. But surely there are other criminals. Like, don't you think women are great criminals? <clears throat> women are better criminals of that, I'm sure. It's amazing how they're phrasing things out. What? I imagined it would be relatively easy for a policeman, maybe such as yourself, to get away with murder, for instance. First person I'd suspect. Me too. You both seem to find this rather amusing. But surely murder is anything but. I mean, it wouldn't be funny if you suddenly discovered uh, that Mrs. Oliver had committed murder. Indeed not. But surely you commit murder all the time. Only in my books. You didn't think I was serious. Surely, Mrs. Oliver, however, I'm being very rude. I really mustn't keep the superintendent from any of my other guests any longer. Mrs. Lorimer, may I, may I introduce Superintendent Bat? Miss Anne Meredith, Dr. Roberts, and Major Despard. Mrs. Oliver and I have been discussing murder with the superintendent. Yes! Have any of you read my book, Murder on the Menu? I uh, have. Very well. Oh, well, in case you have, to, have had the good fortune of reading it, Mr. St. Hanna, the host poisoned one of the guests. <laughs> Dinner is served. <laughs> I hope you haven't all lost your appetite. <laughs> Shall we go in?
really has a wonderful collection. I noticed seven first edition tickets, an original Goldsmith manuscript. Oh, the time has flown by, I tell you, Mrs. Oliver. I could have spent hours in that library. Superintendent, you changed the subject again. Have I? I would have thought that books held a great interest for you. Coffee? Not when I'm talking about crime in relation to Scotland Yard. Look at our host. He's sound asleep. Really, Superintendent, I have something very important to ask you. Very well. What is your point, then? I was just about to tell you what exactly was lacking from Scotland Yard. A woman, Mrs. Oliver? How did you know I was going to suggest that? There was a clue on the jacket of your last book, underneath a very good photograph of yourself. The first sentence said something like, Mrs. Oliver has strong feelings about women and their roles in society. She's convinced that Scotland Yard would function far better with a woman as its commissioner, etc., and so on. Uh, I gave myself away, didn't I? Would you like an apple? To me? Now? It's good for the heart. It's the pectin in them that clears the blood. But we've only just had the most magnificent meal. Do you think I ought not to? I mean, if our host saw us, do, do you think he'd be upset? What do you think? I'll leave it on the way home. One class. No big. Two clubs. No bit. Our four bridge playing friends are sure to go to game, aren't they? Bridge is like a drug. Let's go take a look. Four clubs. Double. No bid. Double. No bid. No bid. No bid. Ought to be going. Happy day tomorrow. Oh, I've got to see my publisher first thing. <laughs> Mrs. Oliver, I've quite enjoyed your company. Thank you. But it has been a strange sort of evening, hasn't it? How do you mean? Well, everyone seems to be avoiding me to some degree. I don't mean just leaving me out of conversation. People aren't even looking at me. Might as well just not be here. Did Satana say anything to you about the others? Not a word. He said something very strange to me. Oh? Well, I don't think it's worth repeating. I think it's a set for effect, knowing what I do for a living. Why do you think, why do you think he invited you? Well, I'd like to think it was because of my personality and scintillating conversation, but since neither were brought to bear upon the proceedings, I assume I was just asked to make up numbers. No, I don't think it was that. I don't think it was that at all. Forgive me, Mrs. Oliver, but you're being rather evasive. I suppose I am. But I think we should leave it there, and I've got to be going anyway. I'll go and jog him up until we have a hard day ahead of us. How can you sleep? Guess. <clears throat> Mr. Satana? Mr. Satana! What is it? I'm afraid the poor man is dead. Are you certain, Superintendent? Quite certain, Mrs. Oliver. Excuse me, I'd like your attention, please. I'd like your attention at once. I'm sorry to have to tell you that our host is dead. You sure, ma'am? I'd rather you didn't go near him, Doctor. But let me examine him. Look, how would you know if he's dead? It, it could don't, be a heart attack. Don't, Doctor. Let me examine him. You wouldn't want to make a mistake. I haven't made a mistake, and no one is going to touch him until the divisional surgeon has, has examined him. Is that clear? You are being very officious, Battle. Why bring the divisional surgeon into this? My professional opinion. I don't need a professional opinion to tell you that our host has been murdered. Oh dear, I think I want to go home. We'll drive you. I'm afraid no one can leave just yet. Why in the world not? I should have thought that was obvious. I assume you mean we're all suspects. But of course. When you say we're all suspects, you are including I'm the I'm speaking the same, Doctor. No one has been discounted. I'm sorry, but we are all under suspicion. We all had the opportunity to murder Satan. But only one of us could have done it! Why do you say that?
bound to say this, so however I find it very hard to believe. Do you really think he meant it? Bearing in mind that you yourself were skeptical earlier on. You said he may have said it to add some sort of mysterious atmosphere to the evening. I agree, that's what I felt, Superintendent. But surely now it's obvious I was wrong. The man has been murdered. And, since our four bridge-playing French are all part of Satana's special collection of murderers, that- There's only his word, or rather yours, for that. One of them must have murdered Satana so that he couldn't get him away. I think we're invited here to add spice to the evening. The amateur objective and the professional. You didn't tell me. Well, of course he didn't tell you. If he told you, you would have had to do something about it. I was only saying what might have been said. I didn't suggest that I agreed with it. Now, I was going to ask you if you had any theories. Who do you think might have done it? Well, instinctively, I go for the doctor. A woman's intuition, eh? It has rarely let me down. Not only the fact that he's a doctor. Do you have something against doctors? Not at all. Apart from the fact that he'd find it very easy to commit murder. He's ha he'd have plenty of opportunity, and his methods would be very and endless. Injection, under the knife, poison, diseases, that is. I think right now, it could very well be the doctor. I can't arrest him on suspicion alone. That goes for everyone. And, if what Satana said is true, one of, the, one of them is a murderer twice over now. There's an old saying that things go in threes. I've got to work hard to prevent that from happening. I better get him in here now. Do you want me to leave? No, I'd like you to stay. I think with you being an outsider, so to speak, it might put, put them off their guard. But no interruptions, please. I know my place, Superintendent. Sergeant O'Connor! Sir. Ask Dr. Roberts to come in, please. Sir. I would have loved to live in one of my books, that is. You always have to leave the, the real murderer last, or else there's no point writing the rest. Life is a little bit different, I hear. Yes. Badly constructed, one might say. I say pass with the first second, please, Doctor. I'm, I'm sorry. I, it's official now, isn't it? I, I was only going to say that it's a hell of a business, if you'll pardon the expression, Mrs. Oliver. I, professionally speaking, I could hardly believe it. To, to kill a fellow where there are others only yards away is incredible. I, I wouldn't have liked to do it. The only trouble is what... What can I say to assure you I didn't do it, if that is? Sit down, Doctor. Motive, Doctor. Motive. That's how you can start to convince me of your innocence. Oh, well, that's all clear. I, I had no reason at all for doing away with the poor man. I, I didn't even know him that well. Of course, I realize you'll investigate my relationship with him, but you won't find anything. We'll see. Then I wonder if you can help me. Do you know anything about the other three? Well, it's, it's hardly, I can't say This it's is not. a murder case, Doctor. I'd rather you didn't have any schoolboy sense of honor to attitude about it. It's unlikely to help matters, no, is it? I'm afraid I don't know any of them terribly well. I met Despard and Miss Meredith for the first time tonight. I, I had heard of Despard, well, his reputation, that is, for and being... What, that, what might that be? As, as an adventurer, a travel through Africa, a crack shot, a fearless. It's all in his book. Were you aware that he and Satana were acquainted? Why should I be? Mrs. Larmer? I do know her slightly. Um, she's a widow, quite well off, intelligent, well-bred, and a fanatical bridge player. Uh, that, that's how we met. Did Satana ever mention her to you? No, he never mentioned her to me. In that case, it must have been a surprise to find you here this evening. I suppose it was. You've no idea why either of you were invited. He's always giving parties. Rather, rather, he, he was. Uh, naturally, the guests vary, and if nothing else, he was an excellent host. I noticed you were enjoying the Mr. Fabra, Mrs. Oliver. I had feel as was being watched, Doctor. But I do admit it was excellent. Now, Doctor, I'd like you to try to recall your movements and the, all you can remember about the others. Oh, it's very difficult, Superintendent. Try, it's not that long ago. I, I think I got up about a Three times, oh, I, I put coal on the fire while it was dying down, and, and then, yeah, yeah, yes, I. this is the right order. I got up to get a drink for myself, and then I got drinks for the ladies. I'm sorry, no, that's, that's not right. I, I got a drink for the ladies first, of course. You have to go right past the chair where Satan was found dead in order to get to the drinks table. Yes. 
in fact, each time you got up, you must have been very close to him. Yes. Didn't you look at him? Yes. <laughs> For goodness sake, doctor, you must have formed an opinion of some, of some sort. I thought he was asleep. And how did that strike you? I thought it was rather rude of him, but then again, he was a strange man. Now, will you try to remember all you can remember about the others, please? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What, what would you like to know? Their, their movements? Yes. So, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Of course. Uh, Mrs. Lorimer got up to poke the fire, I, I, I think. And I, I could be wrong, but I do believe she spoke to Satan. And the ladies? Miss oh, Merritt, sir. Yes. Uh, well, she, she got up to look at my hand when we were partnering. Um, then she, oh, then she took a walk around the room, uh, stretching her legs, I suppose, but I wasn't really paying her that much attention. Uh, you, know, you know, the only person likely to have seen exactly what happened was the one who was dummy at the time. I see. Would you say, then, that the one who was dummy was the murderer? It's possible, even probable, but whoever did it was taking an enormous risk. Any one of us could have looked up at the exact time it happened. The murder weapon, Doctor. You're right. Whoever used it took an enormous risk. It's absolutely made for murder, this little beauty, like going through butter. Just like a surgical knife! Yes, I agree. Uh, it has been checked for fingerprints, has it? It was as clean as a whistle. Murder brought it with him, did he? Oh, or she? It was here all evening, within everyone's sight and reach. I won't detain you any longer, Doctor. May I ask you a question, Dr. Roberts? This is Oliver. I thought I'd made it absolutely Please, clear. Please, Superintendent. You don't have to answer. Oh, it's, it's no problem. I, I have nothing to fear. And since Mrs. Oliver has a reputation as an amateur detective, fire away. How many robbers would you play? Oh, uh, three. We got to game in the fourth before you or the, the superintendent discovered that Satana was dead. And who played with whom? Well, let's see. First, rubber, it was Despard and me against the ladies. They beat us, God bless them, a complete walkover. We never held a card. Uh, second, rubber, I teamed up with uh, Mrs. Meredith. And third, I, was, uh, I partnered with Mrs. Lormer. And fourth, I was back again with Mrs. Meredith. And who won? Well, Mrs. Lormer won every rubber, so whoever partnered with her won as well. That would be Miss Meredith in the first, Despard in the second, and me in the third. And what's your opinion of the others? Really, I... As bridge players, I mean. Mrs. Lorimer, she is the top, so first class. So Despard is rather good, too. Miss Meredith, I suppose you would describe her as a safe player. Takes no chances. And you? I, I always overcall my hand. I find it pays to take risks. Big risks. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, oh good, good night, then. Good night. Doctor, would you ask my sergeant to send in Mrs. Lorimer, please? Oh, certainly. Well, it's a him or isn't it? I have the slightest idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Lorimer, come and sit down, please. Thank you. Were you aware that, that, um, I'm sorry, it's a long night. How long have you known Mr. Satana? I've been in his acquaintance on several occasions, but you can count them on one hand. I understand. Where did you meet him? In Egypt, the Winter Palace Hotel in Luxor. What did you think of him? I thought him a poser, rather theatrical. Found him very amusing in one way, and <coughs> stupid in another. But he gathered very interesting people about him. I feel sure that was the reason for his social success. Do you know anything about the others here this evening, the ones you played bridge with? I'm afraid I don't. Miss Meredith and Major Despard I met only for the first time this evening. Dr. Roberts I know only slightly. He's a very popular doctor, I understand. I'd like to know what your movements were, how often you got up from the bridge table, what the others were up to, that sort of thing. I went to poke the fire when I was dummy. Satana was most definitely alive then, if that's what interests you. I even spoke to him. I told him it was a very lovely fire. He replied that he hated radiators. What time was it? Let me see. 
I don't know exactly, but we've been playing bridge for about an hour. Um, what about the others? They must have gotten up. What did Dr. Roberts tell you about our movements? You're very perceptive. Not at all, Superintendent. I just think things out. Quite frankly, I don't recall what the others were up to. I was quite intent on playing bridge. Dr. Roberts said he got you a drink. I'm sure he did, if you say so. Have you seen this before? The murder weapon, I assume? Would you mind answering my question? This may be a murder case. And I may be a suspect, Superintendent. But there are such things as manners. And they make it men. You would do well to remember that. <laughs> so I guess you are right. Not intend to be rude. Now please, have you seen this before? Never. It was lying on that table next to Satana's chair all evening. Surely not all evening, Superintendent. Mrs. Lorimer, please. I didn't notice it, did you? As a matter of fact, no. Then how can you be sure it was there all evening? The maid assured me it was on the table when she laid out all the ashtrays. However, the point is, Mrs. Lorimer, a child could have killed Satana with this. I understand the implication behind your remark, Superintendent, but I did not kill Satan. I had no reason to. In that case, may I ask you if you have any views concerning the others? In what respect? If you didn't do it, Mrs. Lorimer, then one of them must have done it. No, I have no views at all concerning the others. And quite frankly, I find your question most improper. <laughs> Do I have to remind you this is a murder case? The fact remains. <laughs> that would be all for now, Mrs. Lorimer. I wonder why I tell me, Mrs. Lorimer. It's just that your scorecards are of interest to me, and I was wondering if you could tell me whose is whose. And this is Dr. Roberts, I assume? Of course. Thank you, Mrs. Lorimer. Good night, Mrs. Oliver. I'm very obliged. Well, I can see I'm going to have trouble with her. She's an old school one. Handle with care is my advice. Thank you. Now, what's all this obsession with the bridge scorecards about? Oh, it's the writer me coming out. You see, each person's scorecard gives me a clue to each person's character. And I believe by digging up in this game, we'll be able to solve this murder case. I thought you had already done that. Perhaps, although now I'm not so sure. See, take this first number. Soon over, tame, careful addition and subtraction, a timid player, clearly Miss Meredith's. This one is most interesting, but hard to read because it's done by the cancellation method. A player who wants to know where they are at all times. Major the spark. This one's Dr. Roberts. Harder than this alarm. We're going very, very well, but if something goes over, down they go. And this one, the handwriting shows a person of grace and firmness. Mrs. Lorimer. Once set on a course of action, nothing would stop her. Very revealing. In my opinion, it well and truly sums the lady up. Like I said. If she wanted to kill Satana, nothing would stop her. Sergeant! Sir. Ask Miss Meredith to come in, please. Sir. Now, I'm trying to be very fair. Do I suspect Mrs. Lorber simply because of our little kasha tops? I admit she's got me guessing. Uh, Miss Meredith, come and sit down. It really is awful, dreadful, to think that someone... Uh, one of us. Just take it easy. I only want to ask you a few questions. How long have you known Mr. Satana? Uh, about six months, I think. We met in Switzerland at the winter sports. I was in a group, of course. I wasn't on my own. Did you see a lot of him during and after? Well, yes, I did, I suppose. Parties, that sort of thing. So you liked him? Well... You went out with him to his parties. Well, they were fun. Lots of nice people. 
Mainly. About this evening, did you leave your seat at the bridge table at all? No, I didn't. Uh, no, I I'm wrong. I did, uh, just for a moment. Perhaps longer. I, I went to look at the doctor's hand. But you stayed by the bridge table. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I really can't remember. Take your time. We're in no hurry. N no, I did. Yes, I did. Did you go anywhere near Mr. Satana? Uh, uh, Miss Meredith, I realize you are very nervous, but the only way you can help yourself is if you tell the truth. I think I may have walked about, possibly. Are you certain? Uh, I want an answer, Miss Meredith. I, I think I may have. Ah! It's all right, Sergeant. Miss Meredith just had a bit of a shock. She'll be fine. Sorry, sir. <laughs> now, as far as I can make out at the moment, Satana wasn't a black killer. But there's no doubt that he was a very peculiar man, given to collecting all sorts of strange things. But then, Miss Meredith, you don't seem the type of girl who has anything to hide. No dark secrets. No, I haven't. Nothing at all. And there's no need to worry now, is there? Providing you do tell the truth. I will. Good. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? No. I don't think you did it after all. You can go now. Oh, thank you. You were very hard on her. She lied. That makes her my number one suspect. So you're an accomplished liar, too. Well, it suits my purpose. Hopefully we'll put her off her guard and keep it that way until I've completed my investigations. Well, Superintendent, I discovered something very interesting about Miss Meredith. She actually turns her scorecard over and uses the back. And that's very revealing, is it? Very. Either she's used to being poor or she has a very economical turn of mind. Somehow I favor the former. And where does that lead you? Frankly, I don't know. Just a feeling. An instinct. I did notice that she was very expensively dressed. So did I. It doesn't add up, does it? Excuse me, sir. The Major Spars is getting very late. He's right. Ask him to do this. Oh. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to wait. <laughs> Sorry. I scare you. Put it away, Major. It's highly dangerous. Beautiful. Instant death. In the right hand. <laughs> Major, was this the first time you've been invited here? I came here to a party a few weeks ago. Did you see this then? Yes, I did, but I didn't mark it down for future use. I wasn't suggesting that. Well, I think you were. Were you aware that Santana was a bit of a tormentor? The type of person who loves to pull the wings off the fly? Except that it wasn't a fly this evening, Superintendent. It was a wasp. May I ask the, question, the major question, uh, question, Superintendent? If you must, Miss Stalker. <laughs> you don't seem at all upset about Santana's death. Why? I've seen death many times. Some deserve it, some don't. But it all adds up to the same thing, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Did he deserve it? I don't know. I'm not sure if Satan knew it, but he lived a more dangerous life than I do. Somebody was bound to get him sooner or later. That remark suggests that you know more about Satan than you're letting on, Major. I keep my ear to the ground. Satan had lots of acquaintances, hangers on, no friends. And I'll tell you this, I disliked him intensely. He made the toe of my boot itch. But that's not enough to make me want to murder him. But you wouldn't have any compunctions about murdering him if you had the chance to. I don't suppose any of us would. It seems that Satana either had or thought he had information involving each of the four of you in a very serious crime. Well, in that case, I wish I did do it. That will be all for now, Major. Uh, Major? This is Oliver. Out of the four of you, who would you say is the best bridge player? This is Lorimer, undoubtedly. Partner and Roberts actually managed a grand slam, and most people would have gone down too. Why do you ask? I hear you're pretty good yourself. Well, I'd hardly say so. And why is that? You give too much away. About my character, that is. <laughs> By the way, you're not planning on leaving for foreign parts in the near future, are you? I'll keep in touch. <laughs> An intelligent man. 
Intelligent men are always dangerous. Where do you start? I'll look into the past, I suppose, see what I can dig up. Would you mind if I did some personal investigation work in the meantime? Would it make any difference if I said no? Not at all, Superintendent. <laughs> I want you to be very careful. Someone who has murdered twice will not hesitate to murder again. Do you think there'll be another murder? It's on the cards. Well, in that case, I don't intend to be the victim. I'm sure you don't. Uh, 
Um, Miss Samuels? No. Craddock. Right, that was two or three years ago. More like four or five. Oh, good lord, how time flies. <laughs> a most unwholesome woman. I was glad when she went abroad. With her poor husband, the most wicked things. Not poor man, but a terrible death. Awful. And grass, and infected shaving wash. Poor, of course. Makes you realize it really is best to buy British. I sometimes believe he wanted to die. Man mad she was. They barely made a coffin in his grave before she was off. To Egypt. For goodness knows what part of this. Still, proved to be her undoing. Picked up some native infection. Died from blood poisoning within days. Some might say she got what she deserved. Indeed. You've been very helpful to Amy's purchase, and from what you've told me, I don't think it would be necessary to pursue this matter with the doctor. Of course, but if I can be of any more help. I won't hesitate. Ah, the good doctor himself. I was just leaving, as a matter of fact. Would you mind telling me why you're here? Oh, not at all, old chap. Just continue my inquiries. I must rush meeting back in the yard. Goodbye for now, Miss Burgess. Doctor. What did he want? I must say, Doctor, he was extremely pleasant. But what exactly did he ask you? Really, Doctor, it's nothing important. And in any case, you should know that you can rely on my discretion. Of course. Apparently, someone had told him about old Mrs. Graves. Is everybody right? Graves? Old Mrs. Graves? Yes. <sighs> That's funny. That's very funny. <sighs> Wouldn't he have used poison or something? You saw the knife. 
just like a surgical instrument. And the autopsy said the knife went right through the center of the heart. But why do you think he wanted to kill Mr. Satana? Well, it's the only theory I know, but I think the doctor was in his clutches, so he murdered Satana because he could no longer pay him off. Blackmail. What I imagine happened is that one of his patients died in rather dubious circumstances. Everyone assumed it was natural causes in the end, but in fact, it was the doctor's doing. He was just clever enough to make it look like an accident. Because doctors can do that sort of thing, you know. And I dare say, he's disposed of a lot of patients that way. Probably to benefit from their wills. I think that's an absurd idea. And really, I think it's probably a splendid theory. <laughs> oh, there you are. I do hope you'll pardon the intrusion. I tried the bell, but it didn't seem to be working. Oh, we did a spark with a surprise. Huh? That's why I think the bell I mean, a bit of private detecting, eh? I will put you up to this. Thank your pardon. No, I was just passing through and that happened to be. It doesn't matter. Oh, won't you stay for tea? Oh, I wish I could, but I really ought to be going. I have a long way home. It really was extraordinarily kind of you to call Mrs. Oliver, but quite frankly, I want to forget all about it from now on. The question is, my dear child, will you be allowed to forget about it? I'll see you out. Thank you. Daunting, isn't she? I think she's charming. Well, perhaps. I was at the dinner party the other night. That's where you met Anne. We sat next to each other. She didn't mention you. I've parked my car just sort of the weird. It's very beautiful there. Yes, and very dangerous, too. Ah, it's Meredith. I'd like to explain to you why I'm here. How did you get my address? Battle called up to my rooms earlier and let it slip that you were next on for a visit. He said he was off to Paddington, and I figured I could just get the train down here. See, I thought you were a young lady, all alone in the world. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my friend Rhoda Dawes. Spark. Major Bruce Spark. How do you do? Well, I believe that Superintendent Battle believes that one of us four bridge poets murdered Satana. I came to suggest that you put yourself in the hands of a very good solicitor. This is the number of my own solicitor. He's Offices are Lincoln's Inn. He's a first class man. Thank you. It's him on your side, and you fear no one. It's awfully kind of you, Miss Card. I'm afraid it's been getting Anne down. I can't think why. I didn't do anything. Of course not. But if there is anything in your relationship that you'd rather, well, not come out, you don't need to say anything unless you have a solicitor present. Superintendent Battle can ask whatever he likes. I have nothing to hide. Yes, sorry. I, I'd better be going. I'll see you out. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. We should be pals, you know. We're in the same boat. Well, he seems like a charming young man. He obviously likes you a lot, so don't be ridiculous. No, I just said he must think of you a lot drive all the way down here. To help you, I mean. Well, he seems to have taken more than a passing interest in you, and you and him. Really, Anne. I shall be glad this is all over. It seems to have quite really changed you. I did run out the letter box. The bell doesn't seem to work, you see. You could do with a man about the house. This is Rhoda Dawes, Superintendent. How do you do? How do you do? Would you mind if I had a word in private with Miss Meredith? Oh, of course not. It won't take long. Sit down, Miss Meredith. I understand you work for uh, Mrs. Heldon on the Isle of Wight. How did you know that? Through my inquiries into this murder. But I didn't do it! Miss <coughs> Meredith, I would like to take your word for it, but it is not possible, and I'm sure you are aware of that. Now, I understand you left Mrs. Heldon when she went abroad. Yes, that's right. I went to live in Devon to work for Rhoda's aunt, Mrs. Deer. I knew you went to Devon, but I hadn't traced the name of your employer there. So, in the past two years, you've had two jobs? Yes, that's right. I would have still been in Devon, but unfortunately, Mrs. Deary died of cancer. I suppose you'd say Rhoda took pity on me and offered me a home here. I have no money of my own, you see. I didn't know. I can't help being poor. I you for saying this, but it doesn't seem to pity you. I have a small annuity left to me by my father, and I'm Rhoda's paid companion, as well as being her friend. And I don't suppose you could ride and stay out here in the country. Uh, that's how I managed to save up for my trip to Switzerland. Where you met Satana? I've nothing from him. 
How exactly did you meet him? Rhoda introduced us. I think she was matchmaking, trying to set us up, but I didn't care for him that way. But you liked him nonetheless. Well, we went to parties, and if you want to know what he got out of the relationship, well, he caught on to Rhoda and the others trying to pair us off, and he played up to it. He gave the other someone to gossip about. They used to giggle in corners. You didn't care for Satana amusing himself that way? No, but beggars can't be choosers. I'm very sorry, but I must ask this. Did he seduce you? He most certainly did not! That will be all for now, Miss Meredith. You may or may not know that Satana had a nasty habit of digging into people's private lives. If anything occurs to you that may have slipped your mind that he could have uncovered... I've told you everything. shooting Professor Luxmore on that expedition to South America? It's difficult, sir. Oh? But I'm sure that Professor Luxmore died from gunshot wounds and not the other fever. He had a hard shot for him. In your opinion, Sergeant? With respect, sir, I think I'm right. 
I spoke to Mrs. Osborne, she insisted that Victor was madly in love with her, and shocked the brother so that, so that they could be together. For goodness sake, Sergeant, this is just the sort of evidence we're looking for. Yes, sir, except she changed the story inside half an hour. I'm, I'm afraid Mrs. Oxmoor is a bit of romantic. Not very good in the witness box, eh? Not as far as we're concerned, sir. How do you go, sir? About the same as you. Miss Meredith appears to be poor, but honest. And Mr. Loma. The only thing I've been able to discover about her is that she's a brilliant bridge player, and I've already knew that. Nothing like that at all? Not worth bothering about. Hasn't she got something to hide? She seems to have hidden it. Very well indeed. By the way, sir, that tail you put in his car, he followed him to the lodge. I wonder what the Major's up to. Mrs. Oliver was there, too. Well, I did know she was going to do a bit of private detecting. You never know, she may come up with something useful. Let's hope that was all she's up to, sir. Why? Do you suspect her? Put it this way, sir. If I were the murderer, I might fall off her help to police out. That way I can control things to a certain extent. Create all mad or bright herrings. And if any clues showed up that would be likely to point in my direction, I'd rewrite them. I'll find out. You don't trust anyone, do you, Sergeant? With respect, sir, something I've been done. Expert. Who told you that? You, sir, at one of your lectures, you're most adamant about it. Don't even trust your own grandmother when it comes to my you said. Did I? Yes, sir. Yes, well, it's a very good principle to stand by, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'll answer. Superintendent Battle. <laughs> Great phone. <laughs> Speak up, I, I can't hear you. Are, are you certain? Who is this? Last. What is it, sir? It was before your time, Sergeant, but there was a very famous murder case in 1910. Edward Stanford, a very wealthy American industrialist, found dead in his east side apartment. It hit the headlines over here because his wife was English and she disappeared without trace. Has he got something new to the case, sir? I've just been informed that Mrs. Stanford is alive and well and living in London under the name of Mrs. Lorimer. I do hope you didn't come up to town, especially. Oh no, I mean I could have. I got your letter, it cheered me up to no end, but the truth is, I had to come up with the solicitor anyway. Oh, you feel in need of legal advice, do you? It was made as far as I did. How strange. I think it was only because he thought I was alone in the world. Where you're concerned, my dear, there may have been more to it. Mm -hmm. You're very attractive. What's puzzling is, he also came to me and suggested the same thing. That is odd. Very. Of course, I didn't need his advice. I'm a perfectly good solicitor. But it does make one wonder what that man is up to. I don't think he would do anything dishonorable. Yes, I expect you're right. I'm just being cautious. And I really am worried about you too, my dear, because you are all alone in the world, aren't you? Both my parents are dead, but I have lots of friends. I never had children. So now I'm all alone too. But I didn't ask you here to talk about me. Oh no, that's quite all right. I enjoy hearing about other people's lives. Mine is far too dull. Has Superintendent Battle been to see you yet? He came all the way up to Wallenberg. It was so unnecessary. Has he been to see you? I haven't seen him since that morning. That evening, sorry. I thought he was questioning everyone. Perhaps I don't look a murderer. Oh. Forgive me, I didn't mean to imply that you do. It's merely that I'm an old woman. Oh, you mustn't say that about yourself. The best is gone. How old are you, Anne? 25? You should be married. Everyone keeps saying that, preferably to her husband. Be very careful. Mrs. Lorimer? Who do you think killed Mr. Satana? You really are worried about it, aren't you? Well, you must have given it some thought. 
a little. But surely you've got a theory. And you think Superintendent Battle suspects you, don't you? Well, he seems to be paying me an awful lot of attention, uh, much more than anybody else. And you've nothing to hide in. Oh, why me? Calm down, dear. It's merely that, in my experience, the police are like a dog with a bone if they believe that someone has something to hide. It's just, I have this awful feeling. I can't shake it off. And last night, I had this nightmare. Uh, the noose is around and, my neck, and, and my hands were tied. Stop it. Listen to me. I'm sure something will happen to clear you of the murder. It doesn't matter what you've done, it will happen. <coughs> and once that happens, it'll all be over, and you'll be safe. When it's over, and when you're safe, I want you to promise me that you'll never do anything wrong again. Promise me. I promise. Whatever you do, don't let me down. them when I'm not working. <laughs> However, I'll do anything to get away from the typewriter. And she'll be here soon if we're going to catch our train. But Major Gaspard, is she? Yes. He's taking her to see a solicitor, and then she's going to pop in on Mrs. Lorimer. I wonder why he arranged that. He wants to help her. Oh, I don't think it's that. In fact, it makes her look more guilty, but still, that perhaps that's what he wants. No. He's so nice and upright. <clears throat> He's such a good and pastor. Handsome? And handsome? Yes, he is. And have you fallen for him? What a question. My dear, my age is the type of question you can ask and not even turn a hair. And I grant you, he is a good-looking specimen. I think he's more interested in Anne. How well do you know her? Well, we used to, we live together. It's true. You've got to live with someone to really get to know them. But the truth is you don't really know her at all, do you? I do think I'm naive. Look, I like you, but I think you're a little too trusting. I know Anne was rude to you the other day, but I strongly believe it was because of all this funny business. Put her under an awful strain. I'm sure she didn't mean to upset you. Growing up, I ever need a good friend, I'd like to be you. <laughs> you are kind. Not at all. Be careful, my dear. There is this one thing that's been bothering me. Do you want to tell me about it? If I do, Anne might get angry with me. I won't tell her. Well, back when she was working in Devon. As companionship to your aunt? No, before that. I thought she went right from the job in the Isle of Wight to the job in the steering. Well, not exactly. She had another job. It was only for three weeks, though, so that it didn't count. Well, it was only for three weeks. Well, you're right. And if your aunt was offering her a better job. Oh, no, that wasn't it. Oh? No. The previous boss, Mrs. Benson, she died. How did she die? She was poisoned. It was terrible. She died in agony. It was awful for everyone. But how was she poisoned? She drank some hat paint. What? Hat paint? <laughs> That's simple like stuff. Absolutely. She was took it for medicine. She would asked Anne to paint an old garden hat black. Unfortunately, she broke one of the bottles, and then she asked Anne to paint some medicine to an old syrup of face bottle. All the servants heard her saying it, I swear. And well, somehow they got mixed up and I told you what happened. I think Anne was partly responsible. Yes. But of course it was an accident. Tragic. Still, I think she should have told Superintendent Battle about it. Oh, he'll find out. 
That's what I keep saying. But he insists that by the time they do, they'll found the murderer. It won't matter. Unless. Yes? Oh, nothing. It's the writer in me coming out of that evil mind, you know. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. I love that dress you're wearing. Oh, thank you. You've both got such great taste and dresses extremely well. Yes, nice style of colors. Expensive. How does she do it? Um, well, I've never really asked her. I guess she just had some money left of her own. I've never really asked her. Um, you haven't changed the subject, have you, Mrs. Oliver? I'm sorry. <laughs> you to find out where Anne Meredith gets all this money to do all these things that well-off people do? Well, I... Oh, I guess that turned out! <laughs> I lent you some money. She's promised to me that when she's well-off. Oh. oh, there you are, dear. Come in. I'm not too late, am I, for the 515? Oh, no, dear. We'll be all right. I go. He seems a very competent man. I'm not to talk about it to anyone unless he's there. Would you like an apple? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I really couldn't eat anything. Upsetting, was it? At the solicitors? No, uh, perhaps you have to be going, Rhoda. Pity. Oh, oh, pity I'm so enjoying your company. Oh, well, just before you leave, I was wondering if you two could help me with something. Have I ever told you I've got eight nieces? No. Well, I have. The thing is, every Christmas, I send up eight pairs of silk stockings. Well. I rang Harvey Nichols this morning and they sent around this box while dressed in Paris. Goodness, how many pairs are there? I have no idea. They said to pick out eight pairs to send the rest back and we were done. I love these, they're almost silver. That'll be one pair then. Who know? How wonderful and pink. 38 and sixpence a pair. Gosh, your nieces are lucky. I agree. They are a lovely aunt. These are better still. Oh, I like these two. I like them all. Well, I've got my eight pairs then. Thank you both so much. Thank you for having me. I'll see you out. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. We can find our way. Oh, all right. Goodbye, Miss Oliver. Goodbye, Miss Meredith. Goodbye. Take care, Rhoda. Eight. for the county of Middlesex. That's quite an honor. Congratulations. Thank you. Unfortunately, my practice is so demanding, I can't fit it in. Oh, surely you can arrange something, Doctor. The match is scheduled for Easter weekend next year. It, it would be easy enough to get one day off, possibly two, but for that particular weekend is out of the question. Come now, Doctor. There's plenty of time to find the local. That's not all. Practice matches have been arranged every weekend from Christmas on. I, I can't give them a guarantee I shall be available. And 
Why have you come to see me about it, Doctor? I think you know. The selection committee has asked me to suggest someone to take my place. I had no hesitation in putting your name forward. That's very kind of you, Doctor. But I'm afraid I shall be unable to accept. Oh, they, they will be disappointed. You're, you're sure you won't be available. I'm afraid I won't be here. Oh. Going abroad. And I shall be returning. Well, I, I can't say I blame you. The weather in this country is positively bronchial, though. It will be far better for your health. What? If you can't, or, or won't change your mind, I do My understand. Mind is made up, Doctor. Yes. However, thank you for considering me a good enough player to represent the county. My dear Mrs. Lord, we both know you are a far better player than I could ever be. It just so happens that the chair of the selection committee is an old friend. You're far too modest. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. There's no need to worry about me. Would you like me to post your letter? Oh, no. I shall have more to write. Thank you. Uh, one of my maids will do it. It's no bother. Goodbye, then. Let's hope this murder business resolves itself soon. It will. We both know who did it, don't we? Do we? Yes, I'm sure we do. I saw it happen. And I think you did, too. Silk stock. 
stockings. Good lord, 38 and sixpence a pair. It's almost a constable's pay for a week. I don't think a police constable has any reason to either buy or wear silk stockings, Superintendent. Well, what is their significance? Count them. Seventeen pairs, small fortune. I have been very clever, Superintendent. You know, I don't think modesty would sit very well on your shoulders, Mrs. Oliver. I agree. <laughs> Hear me out. Earlier this afternoon, I asked Anne Meredith and Rhoda Dawes to help me pick out eight pairs of silk stockings. Well, before they dipped into the box, there were 19 pairs. I see. Anne Meredith stole two pairs of stockings. Could have been Rhoda Dawes. Nonsense. All right, I won't argue. But what does stealing two pairs of stockings got to do with Satan's death? Did the inspector or co-maker say anything about Mrs. Benson's money? I mean, who got it? If you think Miss Meredith murdered Mrs. Benson because she was in her will. I don't. But then I asked myself this. If Anne Meredith didn't gain financially from Mrs. Benson's death, then how did she gain? I get your drift. If, Miss, if Mrs. Benson caught her stealing, then she could very well have switched the syrup of fix with a bottle of hot paint. A highly toxic substance. If so, it was murder. And that's what Satana was talking about. May and Meredith murdered Mrs. Benson and got away with it. There's no way we can prove it. She stole my stockings! <laughs> <laughs> Your theory's right, and, and Meredith murdered Mrs. Benson so she wouldn't be exposed as a thief. Then don't tell her about the stockings or else you could be next. <laughs> It's for you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Battle here. I see. I'll call on my way back. Any other messages, Sergeant? All right. Thank you. Apparently, Mrs. Lorimer wants to see me very urgently. She says that she knows who murdered Satana. Mrs. Lorimer murdered Satana. I then, of course, tried to find a motive as to why each one of you could have done it. So you dug very deeply into my past? Not just yours, but I'll be perfectly frank, and Mrs. Oliver was quick to confirm my suspicions with her character. That woman is very quick to confirm anything 
that draws suspicion away from her. Don't you want to hear what she said? I'm sure you're going to tell me, but I can guess what it will be. She said that you were the most intelligent bridge player, the one with the coolest temperament and the most logical powers of reasoning. If I was forced to bet on any one of you planning on getting away with murder, my money would go on you. Am I supposed to take that as a compliment? For a crime to be committed successfully, it's necessary to work out the details beforehand. The timing must be absolutely right. The planning scrupulously correct. Each detail meticulously thought out. Dr. Roberts might easily bungle a murder by, say, overcalling his hand. Major Despartan must certainly kill if necessary, but he might be far too prudent to murder. And Meredith might easily become frightened and give herself away. And I? You, Mrs. Lorimer, are the type of person who would commit the perfect murder, if it were planned. But there's another type of person who would be equally successful. Have you ever said to someone suddenly, throw a stone and see if you can hit that tree? The person does so without thinking, and more often than not, hits the tree. But try to get the same person to repeat the action, and it's not so easy. Because he or she has begun to think, to plan, you might say. I believe this was the kind of action that led to Satana being murdered. And that isn't your way at all. If you had done it, it would have been premeditated. And yet, Superintendent, I did murder him. Why did you kill him, Mrs. Lorimer? I think you know that, Superintendent. Because you committed a similar crime a long time ago? Were Satan's remarks at dinner aimed at you? Yes. He broached the subject on several other occasions, but never so directly as the other evening. I could see the devil in his eyes when he looked at me, taunting, teasing. So then I asked myself, why had he invited you here? Was it merely to indulge in his own cleverness? to savor in the fact that he could prove that I committed a terrible crime all those years ago, and you had no idea of it? Or was it more sinister? Was he actually going to tell you, or rather, if not come straight out with it, at least give you a clue? I knew then I couldn't take the risk. That's what interests me. When the exact time, please, like you decided that Satan had to be silenced forever? I'd seen the dagger before we went into dinner. When we returned to the drawing room, my eyes were constantly drawn to. I can't say exactly when I decided to do what I did. I knew I was taking a very big risk, but I thought it was worth it. You weigh up your chances. We decided to play bridge. Suddenly, the opportunity came my way. I was dummy. I strolled over to the fireplace. Mercifully, Satan was asleep. A quick glance back at the others, and the jacket was up my sleeve. I hesitated. It was now or never. Even so, I was torn as I leaned over him. It was a very agonizing moment. And then, I stabbed him. I decided to speak with him. I thought it might help me with an alibi. I made some asinine remark about the fireplace and pretended he'd responded, just so that I could speak to him again. Did he cry out when you did, when you did it? That surprised me. It was a grunt, really. Nothing more. It could easily have been mistaken for him actually speaking to me. I returned to the bridge table. The last trick was being played. There's something bothering me. You decide to take only what can be described as an enormous risk. What's more is it actually pays off. You actually get away with murder. Oh yes, Mrs. Lorimer, I would have a very hard time proving you did it. However, a week later you decide to confess. It doesn't quite fit in with what I know about your character. 
when I was taking tea with Miss Meredith this afternoon. I realized I was not an entirely wicked person. There I was, calmly drinking tea across from this young lady whose whole life lay ahead of her. And then it struck me. By my actions, I had put her life in very grave danger. I couldn't undo what I'd done. I'd murdered Satana, and that was that. But because of it, not only Miss Meredith, but Major Despard and Dr. Roberts, all going through what is probably the most traumatic experience of their lives, and one of them might well be in very great danger. That I could undo. Well, with this thought nagging at me, I couldn't delay this meeting any longer. No, I'm sorry I can't accept what you say. The truth is, at this moment, I couldn't hang it on any one of them, and I think you're already aware of that. I was rather hoping not to have to go into this. However, you gave me no choice. I had a very important appointment on Harley Street this morning. I learned from specialists that I will not be dealing with any more hands. Indeed, all of my cards are on the table, face up. Top card being the ace of spades. I'm very sorry. It's very kind of you, Superintendent. But you mustn't forget that I murdered Satan. And yet you still insist that you murdered Satan without giving it a moment's thought. Yes. Yes. I'm prepared to accept that you did it. You've already suggested that you committed a similar, a similar crime a long time ago. Which I will be looking into. I understand. What's more is I believe it has a distinct bearing on this meeting. I assume that when you saw the specialist at Harley Street, you were carried away with your emotions. Superintendent, I thought you had an insight into my character. Now, hear me out, please. You saw Anne Meredith this afternoon, and you couldn't feel anything but compassion for her. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Because she had committed a similar, similar crime a long time ago, as to you did. I want the answer, Mrs. Larmer. You saw Anne Meredith murder Satana, didn't you? <laughs> Try to remember all the details. I'll do my best. Do better than that, please. I got up about 7.30, I think. came downstairs, and my housekeeper had prepared breakfast. Well, well, breakfast isn't breakfast for me if I haven't got the times to read it. It hadn't arrived yet. It put me in an irritable frame of mind. Yes, yes. But then I thought I'd heard it drop through the, the letterbox. It turned out to be the post. I don't normally read my letters until after Miss Burgess arrives, but... Since I had nothing better to do, I opened one. It was from Mrs. Lorimer. Briefly, it says she's sorry for all the trouble she's caused us, that, that it was she who murdered Satana, and that it was her intention to set matters right. It goes on to explain about having seen a Harley Street man and the results of that consultation. I, I also gather she sent the same letter to Despard and Miss Meredith. What did you do next? Uh, I didn't hesitate except to get my housekeeper to phone you, then, then I got in my car and dashed down to here. I, I tried artificial respiration, heart massage, I, I didn't have any adrenaline with me, but in any case, it was too late. Overdose. Sleeping tablets. Virinolo, one of the barbiturates. Yesterday's date on this. I did notice. She must have taken the lot. Sergeant, would you ask the maid to come in, please? Oh, look, if you don't need me anymore, I have a rather busy morning ahead of me. 
It does seem as though you've solved Satana's murder. Yes, it does, doesn't it? I'm sorry, I couldn't have done more to help her. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Yes? Come and sit down, please. I realize this is distressing, but I do need your help. Oh, sir, it's so dreadful. So very dreadful to think we were sitting here with her only yesterday. I only want to ask you a few questions, and be very brave and tell me exactly what happened this morning. I can't. I can't go through it all. Yes, you can. You've got to, for her sake. Oh, sir, I shall never forget this morning. Start at the beginning. The doorbell rang three times, as though it were something urgent. I answered it, and it was the gentleman who's just gone out. He says, where is your mistress? I was so taken aback I could hardly answer. You see, we never went into the mistress until she rang. I just couldn't get a word out. So he bellows at me, where is her room? And he marched is in with me following. He burst into her room without even knocking at me, please. And he sees her there, lying on the bed. He says, oh Lord, he think it's too late. Sends me for hot water and brandy. He was desperate, sir. He tried so hard. But I could see it was no good. He was gone all right. Did Mrs. Lorimer seem at all upset last night? No. But I can tell she was in pain. She isn't. wasn't. One for complaining. When I left last night, Mrs. Lorimer was about to mail some letters, did she? Yes. And what happened to them? She gave them to me and I put them on the table to post. And did you? Well... You mean you didn't post them? You see, I was going to, but it was raining and the gentleman was so... Which gentleman? <coughs> the military. <coughs> Major Despard? Yes. He called here quite a while after you left. He was insistent and the mistress was so tired. Sergeant! Sir? Telephone Major Despard and tell him I want to see him here immediately. Yes, sir. Now, I want to know one other thing. This is very important. How many letters were there? Two. No, I lied. There were three. Thank you. Now, this is crucial. Who were they addressed to? I don't know. Think. I can't. You must try. You saw the top one? Yes. You. You must have seen an address on it. I don't remember. But I'm sure one of them was for Herod's. How can you be sure if you didn't see the top one? Because I asked the, the mistress to pay the bill and order some supplies for the chef. I saw her write the check and put it in the envelope and she gave it to me to put on the table. Now are you sure there isn't anything else you want to tell me? No, sir. Very well. You can go now. I did hear a car in the night. Right outside? Yes. It must have been about two in the morning. I wasn't having a very good night, you see. I thought I heard it drive around the back and then leave and a half hour later. Thank you. Sergeant! What in the devil have you been up to? I have located his car. Now where it floats, sir. Has, has he left his flat? According to the caretaker, he threw everything in his car and drove off this morning. The caretaker has no idea where he went. Not at all. You were locked out pig of it. There was a green park. Probably making his way for where they lodge. Sergeant, I don't think Mrs. Barber wrote that letter to Dr. Roberts or Major Despard and Miss Meredith. Some must have forged them. And the letter gave. Is it murderer? Tell you something else, Sergeant. Miss Dawes? Miss Mary's found her. I believe she's in very great danger.
anyone. Me? Well, you didn't tell the superintendent, did you? No. You're not lying to me, are you, Rhoda? I didn't tell anyone about Co-Maker. There's no need to be so thoroughly nasty. Well, it's my business, and if I want to tell him, I will. And I'd rather you didn't interfere. Look, I didn't tell anyone, damn you! What's the matter with you today? Got a guilty conscience? I'm terribly sorry, darling. I've got such an awful headache. I can't cope. I shall be glad when it's all over. I need a walk to clear my head. Why don't we go for a stroll in my riverbank? Got so much to do, Anne. We could go on a punt. It's very warm. <coughs> oh, please. It'll be such fun. Well, um, I'll pop in and get some money. Hurry. I'll catch up. Anne, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Can't wait? I'm afraid if I do, I will forget. Did you go out last night? You know I went to bed early. I know. It's just that I thought I heard someone going out late with the car. And the car's out of action. It was repaired, I told you. Well, I didn't go out. I do get a move on, Rhoda. Sergeant, are you sure that's Spud's car? I should know, sir. Well, where is everyone? Hawk it, sir. <coughs> what is it, sir? It's from the Spuds. Says that she's gone punting with Miss Meredith. We may be too late. He's not Major Spud, sir. Good Lord, give him a hand, man, quick!
No, he phoned to explain that, uh, well, to say he couldn't reach you. But I've been home all day. I can only repeat what he said. He tried, but got no response. And since he was in the country, he asked me to get in touch with you. It seems highly suspicious to me. What are you worrying about, dear lady? He probably wants to put our minds at rest. Well, he could have popped down to see me. Anyone would think you had a guilty conscience. Thank you both for coming. What is this about, Superintendent? I'm home all day. Why couldn't you reach me? Give me a moment, please. And in any case, this ought to be good. I have, I have better places to be. I wouldn't have called you over if it wasn't important, Mrs. Oliver. Well, you solved it now. I always said it was that young girl, Miss Meredith. Sit down and calm down, please. First of all, I'm sure you'd all like to know that I've completed my investigations. What made you suspect Miss Meredith, Superintendent? It was Mrs. Oliver. She discovered a lot of things about Miss Meredith, things that pointed to her not only being an habitual criminal, but a murderer as well. I was only doing my duty as a citizen. Yes. However, I've gone ahead. It started with the bridge scorecards and Mrs. Oliver's character assessment of each of the four players. Let's take you, Major, a man with any amount of nerve, but accustomed to making quick decisions. You're not just at home when facing danger, you're actually enjoying it. And when we look at how you place your cards on the table, these characteristics come into play as well. Also, that you're a man who likes to know exactly where he's going. Yes, you could have killed Satana, but you would have faced up to him, confronted him. Mrs. Larmer, of course, was a brilliant bridge player. Cool, calculated, quick, clean, decisive. But only because she planned every move she was going to make well in advance. I would have accepted her, her confession readily, indeed, I was prepared to. Because she had the intelligence to plan the perfect murder. And yet, she insisted that she killed Satana on the spur of the moment. Her scorecard showed her to be the opposite of the kind of person that would kill in this way. But I have to admit, for a brief moment, I thought I had misjudged her, and she killed Satana after all. But then, Aunt Meredith was dealing a very strange hand. Can't believe it. Thought she was my friend. She was no friend of yours, Miss Dawes. Her scorecard showed her to be a very timid, reticent bridge player, unwilling to take risks. But if she were afraid, well, let me put it this way. When a dog corners a cat, the cat cowers, shaking with fear. But if there's a way out, it will defend itself, suddenly pounce, and quite often win. Her scorecard also showed her to be a very economical young lady. She actually turns her scorecard over and uses the back. A sign of poverty? Or at least someone not used to having a great deal of money to spare. And yet she dressed so well. And if we are to believe Mrs. Oliver, she set a little trap for Miss Meredith, didn't you? Stockings. Isn't that right, Mrs. Oliver? Well, apparently there were two stockings missing. How awful. You were supposed to be helping. Oh, well, Aunt Meredith was. According to Mrs. Oliver, she was helping herself. Now we come to the card that she was hiding up her sleeve. I'm referring to co-maker Mrs. Benson, whose death was thought to be an accident. Well, she was there for only three weeks, so what possible motive could she have for murdering Mrs. Benson? I draw your attention back to my analogy of the, the, of the corner cat. What would frighten her so much that she'd be forced to strike? I believe that Mrs. Benson caught her stealing and threatened her with the police. That's why she tried to murder you, because you might have told someone. But I did tell someone. And Mrs. Oliver made certain I knew. Well, I think. Uh, thank you for putting us in, in the picture. Uh, if that's all, I'll be on my way. I have a rather large evening surgery to attend to. Give me a moment, please, doctor. <laughs> I haven't played my trump card yet. Have I, Mrs. Oliver? I don't know. Oh, you do. You were the one who actually dealt it. Sit down, doctor. As a bridge player, I'm sure you'll really enjoy it. It's a grand slam. Well, well I can't stay long. Excuse me. In the third rubber, we find the figure of 1,500 above the line and 560 below the line. That could only mean one thing, a grand slam. Vulnerable, doubled, and redoubled. If a murder was to be committed under the very extraordinary circumstances that prevailed the night St. Hammond died, 
then two risks must have been taken. One, the victim might very well call out. Two, the others might see it happen. As to the first risk, it was only a case of gambler's luck. Nothing could be done about it. The second risk could be only, only be taken if the players were completely distracted and their attentions were wholly on the game. A grand slam, vulnerable, doubled, and redoubled is riveting. <laughs> I can't prove you murdered Satana, Dr. Roberts. Hmm. I can't even prove that you murdered Mr. that you infected Mr. Craddock's shaving brush, but you did. And how you managed to, to murder Mrs. Craddock will forever remain a mystery. What I what I can prove is that you murdered Mrs. Lorimer. <laughs> That's absurd! You bluff your way into her apartment when she's under the influence of Varanol. Pretend to see at a glance that she's dying. Like the card player you are, you bluff again. Pack the maid off for brandy and hot water. You're now alone in the room with the sleeping Mrs. Lorimer. Except you are not alone. Oh, <laughs> but. Oh, no. You're not catching me out that way, Superintendent. I'm aware of the stupid little tricks you policemen play. Would you come in, please, Mrs. Stevens? Mrs. Stevens, is there anyone in this room whom you recognize? Yes, him. When did you see him last, and under what circumstances? It was here, wasn't it? I was cleaning the windows about 8 this morning. The lady of the house was in bed asleep. He came in with the nurse and dashed straight back out again. The lady starts to wake up and he pulls up her sleeve and gives her an injection. She was out of the line again. Well, of course I did. I was giving her a restorative. Pentacol <laughs> injected intravenously in large doses and in conjunction with Varanol, deadly. And that, Dr. Roberts, I can prove. I'm afraid you've been dealt a very poor hand this time, Doctor. You might as well lay your cards on the table. Well. I suppose I can't bluff my way out of this one then, Superintendent. I'm afraid not. Well, I can't say I'm sorry I did it. I did kill Satana. He was a devil. He tormented all of us. To me, it was not murder. It was retribution. Very well. I'm ready. Sergeant, take Dr. Roberts down to the station. I'll be along to charge you later. Thank you, Mrs. Oliver. I'm sorry to have put you for our little charade just now. I was beginning to think I was guilty. <laughs> well, that's the end of it. May I wish you both great happiness. That goes for me, too. Thank you. Thank you. Wasn't it lucky the window cleaner came this morning? Luck? There was no luck attached to it. That was my ace of trumps. All right, Constable Stevens, you can get back into uniform now. Yes, sir. Er, <laughs> uh, did you say something about a day off if this all worked out? Did I? I don't remember a word of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 so, there was no window cleaner. That means no one saw Dr. Roberts murder us as Lorimer. I saw him. In here. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute! You can't forget that I was the one who said, who said it was Dr. Roberts in the first place! Well, I did say that,
director and stage director, please, to join us up here. Maybe. <laughs> Mr. Spencer, our wonderful technical director, has done an amazing job. Mr. Schnell has done an amazing job at this space and he really keeps pushing the boundaries of what we can do here. show here and I, it was wonderful to work with you with a totally different style of direction, lots of thought, lots of character work, it was incredible, thank you so much. Please join us in the dining hall afterwards for our ice cream social. Yeah. Yeah.